All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for taking some time out of your day on, uh, on this Friday morning across the country. Uh, I am Nick Bradfield. I'm an experience director for Bunker Labs. And today we're going to be talking about the, the PPP, which was part of the stimulus package for small businesses. Uh, we have a couple awesome guests with us today. This is our third or fourth in this series. Uh, there's been a lot of changes. So, so we have a couple guys who are gonna weigh in and provide some insights on it. We have uh, Ryan Ganaw from the Military wa Wallet and Kirby Atwell, who's a CFO at Bunker Labs. Uh, thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks, appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Ryan, tell us a little bit uh, about yourself and about Military Wallet. Yeah, so my name is Ryan Ganaw. I served um, six and a half years on active duty got out for a while, started a website because I it was kind of rudderless. I didn't know what I was doing with the whole transition and that website turned into the military wallet. Then after being out of the military for a good eight years or so, I decided to go back and join the guard. So I'm still serving now, uh, Air National Guard now. Uh, military wallet is military and veterans benefits, personal finance topics. We just try to help military members and veterans find the information they need to take advantage of the benefits they've earned. That's awesome. And, and you've had... Uh a shameless plug here, militarywallet.com is, has a huge following and is, is definitely an awesome resource for people to check out uh, on a whole variety of topics uh, around the military community and benefits. Uh, Kirby, tell us a little bit about yourself as well. Sure. Yeah. So um, I uh, am former army and uh, am an entrepreneur. I um, started in, in real estate. Uh, I have a real estate investing company and I got involved with Bunker in 2014, uh, a couple months after it started. I was part of the first cohort to go through. So um, sort of been around from the beginning and have just seen it grow. And then I came on uh, about two and a half, three years ago now on the staff uh, in operations and at that time it was kind of operations finance and a whole bunch of other things and uh since we've grown from there I've, I've transitioned into the cfo role and just primarily am focused on finance uh our budget and hr matters awesome so obviously huge credibility here we've got ryan who's writing about all things and military benefits and in finance and uh kirby who is looking at finance from a real estate perspective, as well as uh, internally running our nonprofit. Uh, so a lot's happened with the PPP over the last couple months. Uh, just to kind of frame where we're at now, like what is it, what's happened to this point and, and where are we now? Ryan, you wanna start us off? Sure, yeah, so the, the CARES Act was a sweeping uh, stimulus package that covered Gosh, it was, it was $2 trillion, largest stimulus package in U.S. history. So it covered stimulus checks for individuals, a bunch of small business uh, loan issues with the, the PPP, and a whole bunch of other things. So the PPP was designed to keep small businesses operating during uh, the social distancing. So when the CARES Act was launched, we knew social distancing was going to happen. We knew a lot of businesses would shut down. And the alternative is to let businesses shut down completely or give them a lifeline to help them keep people employed. So keeping them employed keeps the doors open and keeps people off the unemployment uh, rolls. So that was the intent and it did a pretty good job of that, but it was rushed through. So there were a lot of issues uh, with the initial timeline getting loans out and they ended up having to uh, like 310 billion more behind it. I think the first issue, uh, the first issue was 350 billion. I, my numbers might be a little off, but that's about right. So uh, it's still running. It's still available. You can apply for it. And uh, the way it works is businesses can apply for a loan that is forgivable if they meet certain criteria. So the loan is based on two and a half times their monthly average income for the previous year. And to have it forgiven, they have to spend uh, that money on certain qualified expenses. I think it's 75% has to go toward payroll and the other 25% can go toward qualified expenses such as uh, rent, utilities, uh, interest on a mortgage, might be one or two other small things. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's the gist of it. 
Um, there are certain other qualifications for maintaining payroll and the number of people you hired and what percentage count towards payroll and things like that. Those are all details that are part of the application, but that's the gist of the, the program and how it works. And, and just to reiterate, uh, if I heard you correctly, you said that the, the first amount was exhausted, but then there was a second amount that came out yeah. and there is some of that still available. So people can still apply. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. The first one ran out in about 10 days. I think uh, Congress went through and, and pushed another $310 billion into the program. As last I've heard, I think there are two thirds or three quarters of the way through exhausting that second amount. But, okay. you know, it's, it's been open now for another two weeks or so. So if you have a small business and you're thinking about applying for this, go ahead and do it. Um, I don't think it's going to run out in the next two or three days, but it is still kind of a time sensitive thing. Okay. And, and it, w with all of this, one of the things you mentioned was that it, that it's a loan that can be forgiven. So, uh, Kirby, can you talk a little bit about what some of that guidance looks like on, on the forgiveness of this loan and, and what happens if it's not, and what, what does all that mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think the, uh, the, the media storyline was, you know, free money, come get it, sign up. Uh, it's basically a grant. Um, and so it kind of is, this is a, a different type of loan than we've pretty much ever seen before. It, it, there's, there, weren't, there weren't any traditional loan uh, criteria. You know, and typically they're going to look at, you know, your income, your assets, all that type of thing. This was just purely based on your payroll. So you had to report what your average payroll was for the last year. And, uh, and you could get two and a half times that. So, you know, so that's great. You know, you could get a whole bunch of money, but it has to be applied towards certain things to get it forgiven. So I think, you know, uh, the SBA and the treasury just released this 11 page application to have it forgiven. The original application for the loan was like two pages. So, so to get it forgiven is, is a lot more extensive. Um, and so I think, you know, people who might have heard initially, this is, this is free money and, you know, they got, they, they might have went out and got their loan. There are a few things that I think we should walk through. It's just to highlight um, around, you know, what some of those requirements are. And, and it's all outlined in the 11 page document. And I think you're going to feel like you're going back to high school math class when you read through it, because it, it goes through and says, like, if, if this happens, then take line one and subtract it from line two. And if that happens, then go to line 13. And so it, it, it's, there's a lot of math involved and, and they're also requiring a lot of documentation to go with it. So, so we can go into to some of the highlights if you want, or if you want to touch on anything yeah. else. Yeah. I mean, just so what I'm, what I'm hearing just to reiterate there is that you have to actually apply for forgiveness. Is that correct? Exactly. That it's not just going to happen. Okay. So, so if it doesn't, it, it, so just to clarify too, if you don't have to apply for forgiveness, you, you could take it as a loan. Um, it, any part of it that's not forgiven turns into a two year loan at, I think it's 1%. So it's like a, an incredible loan terms that you're getting on this money and in, in, as far as loans go, but if you can get it as a grant, you know, and it's free money, then um, that's even better. Yeah. Yeah. Free, free. <laughs> Last time I checked free money is pretty good. Uh, that, <laughs> so you mentioned there, are, there are some requirements and documentations uh, that are, that are required to, to apply for the forgiveness. Let's, let's dig into that a little bit. Uh, Ryan, if you could touch on a little bit of the, some of the requirements in that forgiveness application. That would yeah. Be great. So I, I know the broad program, uh, requirements, but I haven't analyzed the forgiveness application yet. So this would probably be better for Kirby. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll go through this and then maybe you can touch on your point that you made, uh, before it started about the, the guidance too, and where people can check out the updated guidance. Um, absolutely once we go through here, but I think um, just to focus in on, on the forgiveness piece, you know, there's a few things that weren't clarified in the beginning. So it's sort of like um, you sign up for uh, a, a sport and then halfway through the game, uh, they give you the, the actual rules to the, the sport is what is the way this is working, which is, which is odd, but that's because they wanted to get so much money out so quickly. 
uh, that's, that's what's happened. So, so some of the things that weren't clarified initially. Um, so there, when you're thinking about this, like Ryan mentioned, 75% of the money that you receive has to go toward payroll and 25% can go toward those other expenses like rent and mortgage interest and, um, and utilities. So, um, the, the bulk of it really should be going toward your payroll. Um, and, and the, the key is that you have to keep on the same number of full-time equivalent, uh, staff members as you had either, at the beginning of this year, or they let you use a different um, period from last year. There's a, uh, it's called the, where is it? Um, it's for se- you have seasonal uh, workers, right? It's actually for, for um, this is for non-seasonal. This is, there's okay. two different reference periods. It, it, there's, it's uh, February 15th through, through June 30th of 19, or it's January 1st uh, through February 29th. So, the average full-time employees, you can, you can pull from either of those periods. So like for, for Bunker Labs, you know, we've been growing year over year, so we can look back a year ago and say, okay, we might've had 20 employees during that time period last year. This year we have 30, so we're, we're actually okay. You know, we, we, we know that we're not, um, we're not violating that or not dropping below the full-time equivalent there. So, so you got to look at it from, from your perspective and make sure that you're maintaining the same amount of full-time equivalents and they, they spell out what that means in the document. Um, it's basically 40 hours per week equals a full-time equivalent. Um, but you know, and you could drop below that, but you just wouldn't have that portion forgiven. So if you had 10 employees, you dropped to to nine, then you would have 90% forgiven. Um, so, uh, one other thing that, that is clarified too, that they, they mentioned in the beginning, but I think it's, it's good to reiterate because there's a lot of solopreneurs on this call. Um, so if you're somebody who's an individual who got this loan um, as a uh, individual owner of a, a company and it's just you, um, you know, you're capped at $15,385 is what you can pay yourself in payroll. So that's the equivalent of 100000 per year. So they're capping every employee, including you know, the owner at that 15,385. So for example, if you got a loan, say for $30,000 somehow, you know, um, which you probably shouldn't have because it's two and a half times your pay, but maybe you were making uh, a lot more last year. Um, if, if you're paying yourself, uh, more than that 15,385, you can't count that towards the forgiveness. That's where they cap you. Um, So there's going to be a portion that that won't be forgiven there. You can use obviously the other 25% towards, you know, your, um, your, your uh, rent and your uh, mortgage and and utilities. But um, I think that's something to to think about if you're, you're an individual who got one of these loans. Um, And then the, the other uh, thing that, that stood out was um, the full-time reduction uh, exemption. So one thing they said that is it, if let's say after COVID kicked off, you had, you know, 30 employees and you've had to lay off 10 of them. And so now you've got 20 employees, but you qualified for this loan and now you got to get it back up to 30 to get the loan forgiven. They clarified in this document that as long as you have in writing that you reached out to those employees and you offered them their job back and they declined, then you can count them as a full-time equivalent. Um, also, if somebody quits or if they, um, if they uh, ask to have their hours reduced, then they can, they'll, they'll still count as a full-time equivalent as well. So um, that's, that's a, a positive for, for a lot of um, employers, especially if you had to lay off a lot of people and people aren't coming back, um, then you, know, you can still count them. So, and then the last, the, the last page kind of spells out all the different documentation. So that's another big thing to get it, um, forgiven is you, you really need to show the documentation that you are using this toward your payroll. So they're going to want to see your bank statements, your tax filings, uh, your payment receipts for, for your payroll. Um, and then any, any, you know, non payroll related items that you're, 
you're asking to be forgiven like the lease, the mortgage and the utility payments. So, so those are the big kind of puts and takes that, that they put out in this 11 page document. I will, we'll put out a link to it. Um, we can put that in the chat section, I think, but, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you definitely want to read through it if you're anticipating getting this, uh, forgiven. So, so you mentioned, uh, documentation what are what are some best practices to to make the documentation piece easy uh you, you know to to stay organized and so when you do go to apply for forgiveness that you kind of have everything in one place what are what are some best practices there yeah one one thing that a lot of um cpas are recommending and again i i should have probably prefaced this before we started but i am not a cpa and i'm not giving tax advice so um, anything that I say, definitely, I, I'm going off the guidance that they're giving in this 11 page document as I read it. And there's a lot of CPAs still scratching their head on certain scenarios regard uh, on, on different parts of this. So, so talk to your CPA before any, you, you move forward with any of this, but, um, but a lot of CPAs are recommending that you set up a separate bank account for the loan so that you can just draw on any forgiven expenses that you're planning on from that actual account. So then it, it's real clean. You, it's real easy to show your lender. Um, cause ultimately it's, you're going through the, the lender They're, the, the SBA is giving you this guidance, but you're going to need to provide this, uh, documentation to your lender. And the easier you can make it for them to say, yeah, this, this all makes sense. And, um, this should be forgiven the better. And anything to add on that, Ryan, as far as, uh, documentation best practices i know you're a pretty organized guy yeah so um a lot of payroll companies have set up documentation for this so i use gusto uh i think adp paychecks all of the, the major payroll companies uh really set up some internal documents for the application so that you could uh upload with your your documentation uh when you're applying that shows how much you earn how much per employee they capped it at the hundred thousand per employee which is what the the loan requirements are set at so they should make it easy for you to have your payroll for this as well um, so you just go grab your payroll journal or your your payroll stubs for each employee um, if those companies don't have those things set up, you can ask their customer service. I'm guessing they're going to, this is still kind of new for them as well, but they rushed it through really quickly to get those documents for people to apply. I'm sure they'll have something there. Uh, if you use a CPA or a local company for your payroll, talk to them about it. They'll, they'll help you do this. Um, that, that's really it. Then in, when it comes to your additional expenses that might qualify, uh, just make sure you have receipts. So if it's your utilities, download your utility statement. If you pay online, down, download that. Um, rent or mortgage payments, just make sure you have some kind of documentation showing those went out. Keep it all in PDF form. Make it nice, neat, and organized. And and uh, what I would do is I always, I'm, I am very organized. I would have like payroll like here's company name, payroll journal this month or for the two months, put it in one PDF, do the same thing for all your other expenses. That way you don't have 15 different documents that they have to open and, and close. Put it in one or two PDFs, combine them all and it makes the bank's job so much easier. So anything like Kirby said, the, the payroll forgiveness runs through the banks on these. Whoever gave you that loan, they determine if it's forgiven or not. They report that back up to the SBA. So make their job as easy as you can. You know, thanks for that, Ryan. That's, you, you made a, a, a lot of good points. One of, one of them at the end where you're in, you, you both talked on this a little bit, the SBA is providing guidance, but the loan is coming from the bank where you actually got the money from. So what are there? I know there's still a lot that's unclear and you know, they're kind of building the plane as they, as they fly it. Where are the sources of truth? Is it, the SBA? Is it the bank? Is it the CPA? Is it cousin Jimmy on Facebook? What, what is it? Not, not cousin Jimmy. Ah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I would stick with, stick with the SBA and stick with the treasury for now. Uh, the treasury put out a lot of the, the original guidance and they made the plan the SBA was directed to and basically 
make it happen. So treasury funds it, SBA has the rules. They're both putting out guidance. Uh, do check with your bank. My bank sent out a document the other day about um, they're getting ready to uh, start accepting the applications for forgiveness. So uh, a lot of banks may have an internal system. Uh, so there's an 11 page forgiveness document, but there was also a two page application for the loan, but most banks had their own online application form right? So there, most banks are probably going to have an online forgiveness form and it's probably going to be uh, a system that just walks you through each thing. So have the paper document, fill it out, read that paper document, but be prepared to fill it out online. Be prepared to submit your documentation online. Many banks are still, I think they're kind of opening up now, but most of them are probably going to want to have this in a centralized office where they can have a group of people going through all these forgiveness plans instead of had having them done at the local branches because this is going to be a very specialized thing. So uh, just be prepared to do it online. And yes. It, so your, your original question was, where's the source of source of truth source of truth is going to be the SBA, the treasury, and then your bank is going to have a, a lot to say with it. Um, so work with your bank. Uh, but the source of truth is going to be SBA and the treasury. Awesome. Uh, we'll open it up to a couple questions from the audience. Uh, one here, uh, there's been a lot of advice about not relying on this PPP to get you through. How can companies prepare themselves for long-term financial stability beyond COVID? What are some strategies for cash flow management that Kirby and Ryan have been using for their own businesses? Great question. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Do you want me to start? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Um, so, yeah, that, it's, that's very true. I wouldn't rely on the PPP for long-term sustainability because the whole point is that it's a short-term program. I mean, the, the, the reason it exists is they wanted to keep uh, employees employed over an eight-week period right after COVID because the thought process is, was that this was going to be a temporary um, slowdown and then uh, things would pick back up. So, um, so hopefully that's the case. Uh, nobody really knows, but what we're looking at, like, um, I can speak from, from Bunker Labs perspective, you know, um, there's a lot of, a lot of unknowns, you know, we, we have all kinds of different funders for, for our programming and they're all in different situations themselves. A lot of them are corporations themselves. Um, so what we're doing is creating a budget, um, and creating sort of, uh, a couple different scenarios of that budget and saying like, um, we can see how much cash we have in the bank. We can see what our expenses are right now. First, obviously we're gonna cut our expenses as much as possible. Some have been cut for us because we're not traveling and we're not doing a lot of in-person events. Um, but we're gonna to try to maintain as much fiscal responsibility as possible and, and get our expenses as low as possible to start with. Then we're gonna have points um, in the future where if X happens, then this is what we're gonna do. So. For example, if um, we get to the end of Q1 of our fiscal year, our fiscal year starts uh, in, uh, on July 1st. So if we get to the end of, of Q1 and we find out that the funding picture isn't what we thought, say we're $500,000 below what we, we thought uh, we were going to be at, then we're going to make a 10% cut to um, a certain program, a certain initiative, or to a department, you know. Um, so you can make those decisions now proactively if you have the cash reserves. Now, some people aren't in that position, and if you don't have the ability to, to make it into the future at all right now, if, if all of a sudden your revenue just totally cut off 100%, then I would say you, you got to make those decisions sooner rather than later. But if you're in a position where things have slowed down a lot, which I think a lot of people are, then setting up these trigger points uh, for the future where you can really, um, it, you don't have to wonder what's going to happen down the road. It's like, if this happens, this is what I'm going to do. You know, here's what I need to do to, in terms of revenue to maintain, you know, the status quo. And then if revenue exceeds what I think, then here's how we're going to deploy that money to, to continue to grow. So that's, uh, that's one strategy we're using. Anything to add to that, Ryan? Yeah, uh, Kirby, that's a tremendous answer. Um, planning before uh, the trigger points is huge with, with business and life in general, right? If this, then that, and, um, 
And that's just a great way to go. So my business is very different. I'm more of the, the solopreneur, a little more agile in terms of, you know, I don't have the, the big payroll that as many people, those kinds of things. So my situation is different. So I can speak a little bit more toward that side of the audience. Um, Kirby mentioned, watch your expenses. That's huge. In many ways, I would say now is a time to go on the defensive in terms of your expenses. Um, but at the same time, go on the offensive very strategically. So if you see an opportunity, if you have the funds, then look and see where you can make the best ROI, whether that's hiring the right person, trying to expand into a new market or a new niche, um, or just try to grow what you have. Uh, there are a lot of businesses that are doing really well right now during this COVID-19 crisis. And it just could be because of where their business is aligned to begin with. So for example, you might have a, a t-shirt company that all of a sudden realize, hey, we can make face masks out of cloth. It's, it's basically the same thing, right? We just need the pattern. We need to set this up. So that is a strategic expansion. So look for those opportunities. Look for ways that you can grow during this time. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. I mean, there's Kirby, Kirby covered a lot of it. I think he did great. Um, the big thing though is, is watching your finances uh, if you can expand, if you can do it strategically, do that. Otherwise, you know, kind of, kind of hold back and do what makes sense. You know, each, each business is going to be different. Awesome. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, one more question and we'll, we'll wrap up. Uh, what programs would you suggest that help start up veteran companies and what resources should we focus on? That's kind of broader than the PPP, obviously, but. Uh, I'd say the military wallet would be my first yeah, place that's right. to go to. I was going to say Bunker Labs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I went through the, the latest cohort um, in the Nashville area. And, you know, Bunker Labs does do a lot, actually, for the, the startup community, for the veteran community. Um, so there, there are a lot of great initiatives out there. Um, there's another one. Uh, Patriot Bootcamp, that's what it's called. So they, yeah. they do, they're another nonprofit. They do uh, good things for startups. They bring people together. It's, it's more of a bootcamp type thing where you do it for a few days. You take on mentors. Um, Small Business Administration actually has a mentor program. Um, so I, I look into a lot of those. I mean, there, there are so many different programs out there. Some are geared specifically toward veterans. Some are not. But uh, yeah, just find a mentor, work with people, get in a mastermind group. I'd do that. Yeah. And I also, I think that's a perfect question for the uh, Facebook group in general. So if you post that in the Launch Lab Online group, like, you know, we're just two, two schmucks here talking and, uh, you know, from our limited background, but there's so many people in that group who have gotten all different types of resources and they might be local resources that, that a lot of people wouldn't even know about. And so they can speak to that. So, so questions like that are awesome for the, for, to, to pull the group with. Yep. Uh, one more is the military influencer conference. Um, that yep. happens in September this year. Cortez yeah. Riggs founded that a few years ago and it, it has grown from, I think there were about 200 and or so 250 people the first year. I think this year there's a, anticipating close to a thousand or something like that. And it's yeah. all kinds of small businesses, entrepreneur programs. Um, they bring in a lot of big vendors like, like Amazon entrepreneur, uh, things like that. They get a lot of good keynote speakers. It's a great way to network and meet people. Absolutely. That, yeah. That, those are all uh, great. MIC is a, an awesome event. Patriot boot camp, boot camp does a lot. Uh, military wallet, obviously a great resource. Thank you for mentioning bunker. Uh, we're going to end with one thing I, I heard Kirby say, and we'll kind of leave it to everyone to figure out, uh, what is meant by it. He said there's uh, you know, posted it, post that question in the Facebook group because we're just two schmucks here talking. Uh, there's actually three of us here. So one of us is not a schmuck. Um, yeah, I'm guessing it's, <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing it's Ryan, but I don't know. So we'll leave that to, uh, to the community to decide, but uh, Kirby, Ryan, thank you guys so much for your time and, and leaning into this, uh, this issue to try to make some sense of it. Uh, we appreciate everything you're doing out there in the communities and uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Have Thanks, a good man. day, everyone. Can I say one more thing before yep. we shut off? Absolutely. What we've said is, is up to date as of today. 
but this is a, still a constantly uh, evolving and changing program. And there's growing bipartisan support trying to extend that eight week timeline to make it longer. Um, nothing's happened yet, but just keep in mind that everything that we've said today is accurate as of today, but it can change. And we'll, we'll probably see some changes. We just don't know what. So just keep your eyes and ears open and, and go from there. Awesome. Thank you much. Thanks, All right. Guys. Have Thanks, a good guys. day, everyone. Take care.